Hello again. So I'm taking you through my notes. So what happened last night after I watched the episode of the OA, I went out onto the balcony and I was working with the following plants, the cacao plant, the cannabis plant and the tobacco plant, which for me do represent the 93. So with their aid, I was able to go through this. So the first thing I realized, reflecting on my experience in the car, hurting towards the rock face, and then the sea being swept away, those experiences plus a bunch of others, this is what came to me. Life in extremis causes surrender. Surrender enables me to jump from one timeline to another, thus jumping the timelines. People don't generally manifest the will to do this. When I was swept out to sea with Neil, and when my car and I approached the rock face, in each case I surrender, and reality, being plastic, reassembled itself into a different timeline. And so that is what happened. So hurting towards a rock face between 35 and 40 miles per hour, my rational mind has no explanation for that. It is totally discombobulated. But because I'm so much more than a rational mind, because the right brain is very active, particularly with the mediation of the plants, that's what I realised. So reality became plastic and reassembled itself into a form whereby I continued to live this lifetime. And then I'm reminded of shamanic journeying. So I did shamanic journey for a client quite recently who was suffering from lack of motivation bit of depression and what's it all about and beautiful paradox here because actually this person has finally reached the point where they've got everything got a really great relationship with a good partner got a lovely home buying their own house got a job got a car got it all and that's when this hits and doing my journey I suddenly found myself in the Roman legions and he was a centurion or some other senior soldier in the Roman army and I experienced him laughing and joking with his mates. It's like it was as real as I'm sitting here talking to you now from my perspective and that's in the shamanic journey. So in the shamanic journey we also have this ability to jump the timelines. In fact this is what we have to do. The only reason why shamanic healing and other such healing practices work is because we can jump the timelines. We do that for our clients in a controlled and disciplined way, not for fun, not as a joy rider, not as a tourist, but for specific work to help the clients with their issues. So if you're interested in jumping the timelines, you're most welcome to get in touch with me because this is something I'm going to be exploring more and more. So let's continue into my epiphanies. When we work with the plant medicines, we, us, we see ourselves in all sorts of circumstances, piloting a starship, healing members of our family in the in-between realms, like I experienced with the salvia, and I've also experienced with the brown medicine being in the in-between worlds, grasping the toilet bowl and then slipping out of consensus reality into the in-between worlds, having an amazing experience and then slipping back into conventional reality and discovering myself still hugging the toilet bowl. And then with the universal soul retrieval itself, this is why this work is so powerful, because we're working on traumas you experience in all lifetimes. And as we know, there's no such thing as past lives because it's all going on concurrently. It's all happening at the same time. When you really grasp that, that's what the plant medicines, they show us, they teach us, and they ram it into us until we really get it. Time's an illusion. Linear time concepts. Everything is going on concurrently. That's how we can change the timeline for that person. So back into the epiphany. Hey baby, you are everywhere and every when. It's just that immersed in daily life, you are no longer aware of just how magnificent you are. 
when you dream, you are free to travel. We all do this every night, even if we don't remember. That's right, so every night we dream, every night we journey, we travel. We leave behind this contentious reality. When I'm lucid dreaming, I am the one consciously creating the reality, having collapsed the timelines in the lucid dream. For in the lucid dream, we are powerful beyond measure. And I had one quite recently, and it was absolutely wonderful. Make a film about that some other time. Let's stick to the plot and the epiphany. When you tell yourself a different story of yourself and your life, remember, there is no past, present and future. There's only the eternal now where everything is happening all in the eternal now. You create a new reality to inhabit and this is how healers can heal. So what happens is a client comes to the healer. That means they're bored with their old story. Shut up, I don't want to hear that old story anymore. I've got this illness, I've got that illness. Shut up, I'm bored, I want something different. That's why they approach the shaman or other form of healer and so this is what happens so if the new story of the client is stronger and that's all done through intent and the will of the shaman then the will of the client for the new story happens and the healing occurs so only those open to new possibilities get to have this experience it doesn't matter how it's delivered with the, through a USR, through Reiki, spiritual healing, hypnotherapy, neurolinguistic programming, whatever works. Whatever works. So now here's the thing. A near-death experience forces a new timeline onto those who survive those experiences. Those who die are unable to choose a new timeline, so they jump off the train into the elsewhere, which is where we go when we die. But talking here about those that survive these experiences, those who survive severe experiences, which of course are initiations, which of course are being taken right side out of the comfort zones, this is what happens. So when it comes to clients, if they're clinging on to their old story of their illness, oh my illness, it's so important, I'm deriving all my identity and self-importance from my illness. Well, surprise, surprise, the illness persists. If they're really ready to let it go, and it might not be an illness, as in the case I gave you the person they discovered was in the Roman Legion, it was simply that that person knew that they were ready for something more. So let me tell you. So what was such wonderful success about that one lack of motivation some depression well within a very short time after the healing work was done and all the incidents i described from other lives were recognized by the client very shortly afterwards was offered a brand new job better pay better circumstances working in a really lovely environment with their partner just like that because he was ready to let that old story go that's the way it works so I want to give you this one. Carlos Castaneda writes in his book and he talks about this shaman, Don Juan Matas. And Don Juan Matas tells a story. And the story is this. A shaman's been training, completed the training, and there's a party held to celebrate the completion of his training. And his teacher is there and they're standing by the river bank talking about all the amazing experiences and then suddenly with no warning the shaman just pushes the new qualified accredited person into the river and it's a fast flowing river he's in danger of dying near-death experience surviving severe experiences sse so what he does is he manifests a double and he is in the water being swept away and his double is running along the river bank because his situation required this kind of intervention. And so the double running along the river bank raises ahead, sees a tree sticking out into the river, shimmies along the branch, hangs his arm out and grabs the one in the river out of the river and rescues him. In other words, he rescues himself. That's a beautiful story because it shows 
how all these things operate. So the key thing to grasp about this is that people have been attracted since time immemorial to severe experiences and Native Americans particularly would subject themselves to what people regard horrific things including being impaled, all sorts of really awful things. And you can see now what it's all about. And you can see what the plant medicine experiences are about. You can see what the healing experiences are all about. All this is about the ability to jump the timelines. And so we can have an experience which is thrust upon us, like when I found myself with my car hurtling towards the rock face and when I was being swept out to sea. And then there are other situations where it's not random like that. Nothing really is random, of course, though. You can have the other one where I was subjected to a series of water experiences when I was 10 and I was taken by these people and I was put into this tank of water and I was held under the water and and I was released and every time they did this to me they held me under the water for longer and longer and longer. So that was another example of surviving a severe experience triggering a jumping the timelines experience. So that was where it was done to me and then as I was saying the Native Americans people can actually choose to do these and that's why the plant medicine is so great, that's why they work. Basically, if a person doesn't have something that is literally putting him at a significant risk, he ain't going to do it. That's the whole point. So that's my epiphany. So I understand now why the OA goes through all the things that she goes through in seasons one and two and why I've been through all these things in my life. Because it means that jumping the timelines, yeah, no problem, it's great. And we're living in a society where people are becoming more and more in the UK obsessed by health and safety, not taking any risks, becoming more cowardly, becoming ever weaker, taking drugs to mediate any sense of feeling. Oh, I feel a bit upset. I feel a bit anxious. I better take a pharmaceutical drug. So the whole society is really going in the opposite direction. But where we develop our power to jump the timelines is to take risks. Not stupid risks, not leaping off a cliff into a pool of water when we don't know how the water is deep. That's just dumb. Of course, you would check how deep the water was. You check the distance. You would actually do some research before doing such a thing, if you were to do it at all. Or, as in my case, things happen. So, thank you very much for enjoying traveling with me on this jumping the timelines surviving severe experiences initiation all power to you